It's the night before Halloween, and the Yukon Huskies are hoping to pull a few tricks and get some treats against East Carolina. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of The Blitz. I'm Joe D'Ambrosio, and playing the role of the head coach of the Yukon Huskies for Halloween is the head coach, <laughs> Bob Diaco. And I, I thought you said it right on Monday at, at the press conference. It's really the first time all season that your team was beaten in the game yeah. and, and, and wasn't in it until the last It's time. true. That's appropriate. Um, the, the, when, you, when, you, when you think about that piece, you can look at um, the positions in, in parallel. So rather than offense against the defense, you can actually look at how their skill matched up to our offensive skill. Right. And when you think about it like that, it becomes more clear that the windows were bigger, the balls were caught better, they were thrown more accurately, and, and all in all, it was a note for us to say, here's where we're at. Right. One thing I know that you were happy with from the game itself was the work of your defensive line due to absences and injury. Mm -hmm. You had to adjust some people. And the, the three main cogs, the three big ones in the middle of that defensive line all had to do different things and all did them pretty well. I thought they played great. I was so impressed with that. I thought it was a huge bright spot um, as it relates to the, to the stick to it -iveness. And it, re it relates to the clarity and understanding of our defensive system to be able to move a guy that hadn't practiced at one, one snap to a completely different position and have him execute at a high level shows a depth of understanding uh, that you know what the adjacent players to you are doing. Right. And, and when you understand it at that level, it um, gives you a chance for production. You face East Carolina. Uh, they come off a good effort where they were leading Temple until the last yeah. four minutes of the game. And it's a team with a dual quarterback system. What problems or what difficulties, I should say, Bob, does that present in preparation? You have another very explosive team um, in all three phases. They have great athletes. They're tough. Uh, their, their coach does a great job. They love him and playing for him. So you could see that passion and energy translate on the field. Um, and... and the two quarterback situation is a challenge because one is, is a passer and the other one is a runner. So it's not like you can, you can um, prepare. And in a short week, it even, was even harder right. um, to, to prepare uh, for two completely kind of separate cities there. And in a short week, a much shorter week than East Carolina has had, the physical part of getting ready to play this game is probably the toughest it's been for you all year. Yeah, very taxing. I mean, we just basically, by the time we got to the, 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 the first heavy practice, it, w it was only one day removed from when we got home. Right. Because it wasn't just uh, Saturday. It was Saturday night. Late Saturday night. And it night. wasn't at home. Right. It was on the road. And by the way, the team we're going to play played Thursday. At home. Not Saturday. Right. At home. Right. So it, it, it crea it's very interesting. Whatever, whatever that means. Well, I'm sure the Husky fans are anxious to see your team respond. As always, thanks and good luck. And they will. Thank you. Time now for our player profile, and it's number 15, the outside linebacker from Langhorne, PA, and Nashamini High School. How do you pronounce that? Nashamini. Nashamini High School in Pennsylvania, Luke Carrizola. And Obviously, disappointment uh, on Saturday. How do you respond to a game like that, with the mentality of a team that's been playing so well on defense to, to bounce back from that? Yeah, I mean, uh, give credit to Cincinnati. A uh, very good team, talented, uh, pretty much every position offensively. And we just have to make corrections in film and then uh, get ready for this next week because it's a short week and uh, pretty much uh, prepare to win and expect to win. Now, in the second half, they didn't get a touchdown until the very end. Mm -hmm. It seemed like the defense played better. Were there any adjustments that were made, Luke, or was it just better execution? Yeah, I mean, I think there's uh, some coverage adjustments. I feel like we could match, uh, match up better with them. And that was part of the reason that um, they didn't score as much. And uh, we just have to keep making those types of adjustments uh, and continue to play hard. Now, I know we talked before the season began. You were anxious to get out there after missing the second half of your freshman year due to, due to your injury. How have you felt you've played this year? How do you feel physically this deep into the season? Yeah, phys physically I feel great. I mean, uh, Matt Bayless, Coach Bayless has done a great job with me. Uh, same with Bob Howard and the training staff of just getting back. And I kind of, um, when I was hurt in my freshman year, I kind of just still attacked every day, just like it was practice, but it was rehab for me. And um, I, I feel like I came back a lot stronger than I was before. And I feel like I started off having a pretty good year this year. 
From the hybrid position, what do you like best? Rushing the, the quarterback or dropping back into coverage? That's tough. Um, I mean, I'm used to rushing the passer because in high school I played defensive end. Yeah. My hand in the dirt every play. So dropping back is kind of like kind of like a little treat. But, I mean, I like, I like getting after it both ways, honestly. I like getting sacks. All right, we have a little segment here that we call three and out. Every one of your teammates who have preceded you on this has done well. We expect no different from you because you're a smart guy. You're a linebacker. All-time favorite Halloween candy. Candy? Yep. Um, and please don't tell us that you don't have a sweet tooth. You're a kid. Oh, no. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm going to have to say, it's, it's a rare one, but I'm going to have to say the now and laters. What are those? It's kind of like, hmm. It's kind of like a Starburst, but it's, it's kind of, it starts off hard. Yeah. And then they last long. It just lasts okay. longer. Right. Yeah. And what's it called? Now and later? Now and later. So right. yeah. That's a good name. Well, favorite Halloween memory as a kid growing up in PA? Oh, yeah. Uh, fourth grade, my costume was... I loved my costume. I was a I was a chick magnet. I had all the Barbie dolls uh, strapped on my shirt. Is that opposed to now? Are you still a chick magnet? Or? You probably shouldn't answer that not, question. Not, not as much as I was not back the, then. As a yeah. fourth grader, yeah, no problem. Yeah, not as much as I was back then. <laughs> sure. <laughs> all right, let's continue with the uh, theme here as far as uh, uh, Halloween is concerned. Uh, favorite scary movie of all time? Favorite scary movie? Um, I'm a scary movie fan. Favorite scary movie? For some reason, um, tough one. Are you a Walking Dead fan? Oh TV yeah. TV wise? Yeah. I heard this Sunday was a pretty, uh, pretty scary. I'll wait for one. it to come out on okay. Netflix though. All right. Yeah. Uh, of your teammates, <laughs> of your beloved teammates, who's the most likely to go trick or treating this weekend? Oh, trick or treating this weekend. Um, I'm gonna say Al Bloom. Really? Yeah. What will he dress as? Nothing scary. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Which teammate is most likely to run screaming out of a haunted house? Run screaming out of a haunted house? I'm going to say John Hicks. Really? Yeah. How come? Um, I don't know if he's in the whole scary movie scene, right. honestly. Yeah. Uh, finally, how many of your teammates do you think will dress up this weekend? Just a round number. <sighs> dress up? How many? Yeah. Because you do have Saturday off. Um, yeah, when we get the win, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a good amount. I'm going to say... Maybe 30. Really? Do you have a costume planned? No. Okay. You could go as a coach. You could go as a radio guy. A lot of things you could do there. Yeah. The radio guy would be the scariest thing. Luke, thanks a lot. We appreciate yeah, it. No have problem. a great game on Friday. Thank you. That's Luke Carrizola. As UConn returns to the rent this weekend, we're hitting the streets to find out how much the UConn student body knows about this week's opponent and this week's edition of Know Your Foe. Who is UConn football playing this week? East Carolina. East Carolina. East Carolina. Uh, Eastern Carolina. We're the UConn Huskies. What is East Carolina's mascot? It doesn't matter. They're not cool. Oh, pirates? Pirates. pirates. Um, pirate, right? It is pirate. Yeah, absolutely. What state is East Carolina in? North Carolina. North Carolina? North Carolina? It's North Carolina. All right. Yeah. That's my mentee. That's my mentee. What are their colors? Uh, purple and gold. I don't know. I don't know. Red? Purple and yellow. It's gold, but oh. yellow. Well, that's, you're right. Which former CEO of the WWE ran for Senate twice in Connecticut, lost both times, went to ECU? Um, oh, my God. I know her name, and I can't remember now that you asked me. Oh, 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 it's uh, Linda McMahon. Linda McMahon, yeah. Linda McMahon. I think Linda McMahon. Another famous person went to ECU. She, it's an actress. She was in The Blind Side. She's also in Gravity. No, what's these? No, 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 no. Oh, my God, I forgot her name. Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock, yeah. Sandra Bullock? Sandra. Sandra Bullock. Oh, uh, Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock. Wow, people know San big Sandra Bullock fans on oh, UConn's yeah. campus. <laughs> All right, UConn football is taking on ECU this Friday at 7 p.m. Who's going to win? UConn. 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 Uh, Huskies. UConn Huskies. Obviously UConn. And as always, we wrap up the Blitz with Inside the Press Box. My friend Neil Ostrock covers the Huskies for the Journal Inquirer of Manchester. Uh, Saturday, I, I thought kind of an anomaly, Neil, because for the first time all year, it was a game that you really felt UConn wasn't in, and it happened in a place that people like to call the Wrigley Field of college football, but for <laughs> UConn, it's been the little house of horrors. Yeah, no friendly confines. They haven't had much success there, and it started off well, which was a little bit surprising in itself, you know, three and out quick, and then the offense gets on the field, right down the field on touchdown, but after that, 
yeah, they really, really were never in it for, for most of the game. We saw Brian Sheriffs run the ball so well in that first series, and then they made adjustments. And you really, and Bob Dacko talked about this on Monday, the, the problem with running your quarterback running that much is he takes a hell of a beating. Yeah, and he has not learned to love the slide. And you're a football player, you know, your whole life you've been trying to gain yards, and now, you know, you have to slide every now and again, and it's tough to learn. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really a positive in some ways. You want a guy that goes hard all the time and, right. you know, has everything for it, but it's, it's obviously taken a toll on him. I would say the bright spot offensively this year has been the continued progression of Arkell Newsom, who is not only the Huskies' best running back, but I, I and I didn't see him play at all in Ansonia High. I'll be, I'll be honest with you, I don't think you did either. Um, but his ability as a pass catcher, I think, we've overlooked coming into this year. Oh, absolutely, and, and doing it from different positions, be it coming out of tailback spot, kind of an H-back, spread out wide. He's obviously been their, their best offensive weapon, you know, regardless of uh, where he starts on the play. And I, I admit, I saw him once in high school okay. for a you half. Okay, lead one so nothing at the end of right, half. That's right. Uh, but no, no, obviously, he's, he's been a bit of a surprise. Obviously, I knew he had skill, I knew he had talent, but yeah, he's been a little better than obviously than I thought. It's UConn Friday night against East Carolina, a team who they lost to last year, but is a completely different team than a year ago. And and one thing that works against UConn is they have two days less to prepare for this game than East Carolina. Yeah, I mean a short week after a real physical game at Cincinnati where a lot of guys were banged up. It's that's the tough turnaround. It happens to everybody, but it's it's a difficult spot. Finally, in the spirit of Halloween. If you could go out at Halloween as any other member of the media except the voice of the Huskies, who would you go out as? Uh, well, if I have to fit into someone's shoes, it'd have to be Wayne. Right. So obviously, I'll, I'll take the, uh, your, your broadcast partner. No, oh, the mayor. It's tough you know, getting all that weather information in would be difficult. Neil, thanks. Appreciate it. I know. So. You can follow Neil on Twitter, at Neil Ostra. So the Huskies get ready to play East Carolina. Kickoff is 7 o'clock on Friday night at Pratt & Whitney Stadium at Rensselaer Field. And if you can't watch the game on ESPNU, we certainly hope you listen to it on the UConn IMG radio network. For Neil Ostrot, for Luke Carazzola, head coach Bob Diaco, and the best video crew ever, UConn Video, I'm Jody Ambrosio. Thanks for joining us on The Blitz.